I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt once again. What about to another review? And this is a Patreon review for JS, who got one of the bigger tiers on my Patreon. So he's getting quite a few reviews. Thank you for that. If anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, you can request it either directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries. But if so, thank you. But one of the films he wanted me to talk about was New Jack City from 1991. And this is an entertaining crime action, I guess that'd be the best way to describe it. It's directed by Mario Van Peebles, who's also one of the actors in this. And Mario Van Peebles, I've known more as an actor, like Gunman, The Exterminator 2, among others. But he has been a director. I mean, his father, Melvin Van Peebles, was a director, so followed in his father's footsteps and he directed films like Posse and I can't remember the other films he's done but he did a good job here and I think one of the great things he did was he got a great cast Ice-T which I never minded Ice-T I liked him in Surviving the Game he got famous for doing some TV shows some cop shows and I thought he worked fairly well here as our lead cop. He partners up with Judd Nelson from The Breakfast Club, so it was interesting to see Judd Nelson in this type of role. Fairly different, different look, facial hair, a different role. The, the big one, though, is Wesley Snipes as your villain. And Wesley Snipes is energetic and personality and great lines of dialogue. Money talks, bullshit runs the marathon. See ya. Wouldn't want to be a... And him and another guy drops a guy off a bridge and that's how the movie starts. Other lines like, sit your $5 ass down before I make change. <laughs> Definitely a villain that is interesting. You want to see what will happen next. And the opposite of sleepwalking. They did just very energetic. and You can see why people would gravitate towards this guy to work with him. But he's also a very dangerous individual. And pretty much it's him as this rising drug lord during the crack epidemic in New York City. And Mario Van Peebles is the boss of Ice-T and Judd Nelson. And at first they get this crackhead played by Chris Rock. Who plays this character Pooty. Who Ice-T helps clean up. And you get to know a little bit about Chris Rock's character. Definite. I mean this is before Chris Rock really broke into stardom as a standard comedian and then movies of his own. I don't think he would ever play this type of role today, but as a younger man, I mean, this was 1991. I mean, before this, what he was in, like one of the Beverly Hills Cop films, I think two, where Eddie Murphy's like, it's my truck, park it anywhere. And Chris Rock was like a parking attendant. And 
I have to wonder like how many saw Chris Rock's role in this and did parodies. I wonder if Dave Chappelle based his character on this guy. Like when Dave Chappelle did the Chappelle show and did crack crack crack. I wonder if he based it on Chris Rock on this. Maybe I'm wrong. And they did Chris Rock undercover, but Sally, he gets back on the drugs and things go wrong. And so then Ice-T and Judd Nelson have to go undercover and work with Wesley Snipes. And what worked for me is number one, the cast. The cast is the strongest part of the film. You know, I liked all in the cast. I get Wesley Snipes, this is him. Not the Wesley Snipes that there was a time where he always had to have fucking sunglasses. And then he, when he went to his directed video action films, it seemed as if he wanted to show less, less emotion. I guess as an action hero, he thought he had to do that. At least his director video action film work. But this is the Wesley Snipes I remember from White Man Can't Jump. And I didn't dwell with this movie, but I had seen clip bits and pieces where he's not bouncing around the walls but he just has more bounce in the step so to speak I said the the dialogue is fun to listen to I like the fact he's watching Scarface with Pacino other good lines Judd Nelson has a good line where he's talking to Ice-T it's like this whole drug shit it's not a black thing it's not a white thing it's a death thing and death don't give a shit about color and I thought this went at a good pace I, I never thought it really ran out of steam I think because it consistently kept with its plot it didn't deviate towards oh Ice-T has his relationship with this girl or Judd Nelson has this other thing going on or oh let's get into Wesley Snipes love life too much and no it was consistently about Wesley Snipes rise as a drug lord and the cops trying to stop him I didn't whether using this guy his former crackhead to go undercover or them going undercover it went at that consistent rate and it did not deviate because sometimes that's the problem it's not always bad thing but sometimes it is when they deviate into subplots upon subplots upon subplots and you watch you go we don't need this shit and we don't need that shit and we don't need that shit just be a bit slimmer lose some of the fat off of this and I thought this did a fairly good job with that to the point I think it's one of the better movies of its kind and it's not tons of action but when it's there it's decent like this other gang are pissed off at Wesley Snipes so you have a shootout during a wedding ceremony this is a movie that has memorable scenes I mentioned a couple of them one of them is when Wesley Snipes is talking to his brother and the guy says am I my brother's keeper and Wesley Snipes go yes and he's tearing up but he's you find that clip on YouTube and the ending has a certain sense of serendipity I mean spoiler alert on the ending spoilers while I get a drink where Ice-T gets to beat the shit out of Wesley Snipes which I'm sure Wesley Snipes would not allow that well, maybe nowadays he would, but when he after Blade, I'm sure he would not allow so, someone to beat the shit out of him like this. Because nowadays he'd have to use some martial arts and such, but this is not what this character was supposed to be. And the trial happens. You get some nice dialogue with the trial with Wesley Stice talking about the American way. I'm not going to say that verbatim the clip on YouTube <laughs> do a much better job than me and then this old man that tried to shoot Wesley Snipes before comes at him again and kind of like Scarface the movie he was watching also does a dive after being shot so he kind of ended like the movie he was watching before the world is yours Blade
First you did the vampire, then you did the pussy. Then when you did the pussy, then you did the yayo. Then you did the blood, and then you did the demolition man. I'm just fucked with it. So yeah, it's a certain sense of serendipity that you think don't get away with it, but no. It goes all snake eyes for Wesley's character. But yeah, has I thought Marvin Van Peebles kept I think the strongest thing he did was kept the momentum going with the movie. I didn't feel any time in the movie where it dawdled and it struggled and it slowed and it just stopped dead in its tracks and go, okay, what the fuck are we doing with this? I did it kept this storyline simple, consistent, straightforward to the finish line. And again, it's not a wall-to-wall action slam bane movie, but because of the cast, because of some memorable scenes and nice pieces of dialogue, uh, Wesley Snipes doing his all. I mean, I guess in a way you could call it the black version of King of New York, that film with Christopher Walken. And I like Kino New York, but I wish Kino New York kind of had the ending of this. Because at Kino New York, like all the cops, if you even do like them, they all fucking die. And then Prince Walker's death is almost like a noble death where, I mean, he's just in the back of a, well, I guess I spoiled Kino New York, sorry. But I like Kino New York, but the ending, I'm like, eh. I mean, I didn't hate it or anything, but... I would say between the two, I like this film more. And Judd Nelson, I would like to have had him do a bit more. Because usually for a good chunk, well, not a good chunk, but a, a decent amount when he partners up with Ice T, he doesn't really have any dialogue. But I, mean, I don't know, maybe that's the point. And then once in a while, he'll say one thing or two things. But I did, maybe that was the point is that these two don't know much about each other and then when certain thing happens then they start to get to know each other but yeah I like Judd Nelson in the film I just wish he had a bit more to say or do again he had that one great dialogue that I mentioned about death don't give a shit about color but I just wish Judd Nelson had a bit more I thought he was a, a tad underused and Marvin Peoples are good I mean I did, he's not in the film a ton I just because hey I'm directing the films so I can pop up every once in a while but these are like teen nitpicks and such overall very solid film strong film and I don't know if it's going to do anything to stop people from smoking crack but it's definitely a entertaining time with some colorful performances and a, pretty solid cast and in a consistent through line that just didn't fucking deviate to 18 fucking subplots like some movies step up on or trip over on onto doing that bullshit that's just my opinion but with that said thanks for watching take care we will see you guys later bye bye